Hello, I'm John McFadden. I'm an ordained Presbyterian minister and psychotherapist. In my career, destructive people, especially people called sociopathic and narcissistic, interested me most. And in the past 10 years, I've explored how leading insights about destructive leaders and their supporters have relevance for national and international conflict resolution. I discovered that some experts disagreed with the standard view of destructive people, with the idea that they lack remorse and empathy. I became convinced that this familiar bleak view, while superficially correct, is mistaken. In the new evolving view I helped develop, guilt and shame and the capacity for empathy in these people is hidden, not absent. Properly understood, these people are not intrinsically immoral. They are victims of humiliating parenting that initially devastated them and then forced them to repress their humanity. This view is profoundly empathetic, following in the tradition of non-judgmental paragons, such as Jesus of Nazareth, St. Patrick, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Sigmund Freud during his later years, and notable Jewish, Islamic, and Buddhist leaders. Ngang Chak Rinpoche, a Buddhist monk, most profoundly expressed this view. Amazingly, he said, one has to also have compassion for Hitler, for Stalin, for Mussolini, for whomever. How is he able to develop feeling for people near universally condemned as purely evil, the ultimate in immorality? He said that his feeling for them was evoked by his explanation of their monstrousness. He said, one has to understand their very terrible situation. That is, one has to understand what monstrousness happened to them to cause their monstrous behavior. This is a plea for unconditional empathetic explanations of destructive people. And Rinpoche's explanation echoes Jesus' last seven words, for they know not what they do, and other spiritual and political leaders throughout history. What's most sublime in this view is that understanding is the solution. Credible, empathetic understanding can transform destructive people. Increasing documented successes relying only on empathetic understanding of white supremacists help make this point. A remarkable homegrown illustration of empathetic explanation is reported in the article, Daryl Davis, the Black Musician Who Converts Ku Klux Klan Members. One night in 1983, as he was playing the piano in a bar, he was approached by the Imperial Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan in the state of Maryland, and they struck up a conversation. Davis listened, asked questions, took notes, and slowly dispelled each racist ter stereotype. Their many ensuing conversations gradually enabled them to become friends. If you watch Davis's TED Talk, Why I as a Black Man Attend KKK Rallies, you see video evidence of his effect on Klan members. It is shocking to see this large, very dark-skinned black man talking to the Imperial Wizard, who was dressed in full hooded Klan regalia, in amongst many other similarly clothed KKK members. Davis calls his method having civil conversation. He further explains his approach, saying, people must stop focusing on the symptoms of hate that's like putting a Band-Aid on cancer. We've got to treat it down to the bone, which is ignorance. The cure for ignorance is education. You fix the ignorance, there's nothing to fear. If there's nothing to fear, there's nothing to hate. Or in my terms, if you convincingly disprove the hate-evoking, shaming explanations of troubling behavior, the hate goes away. Now, that may seem very simplistic, but there are sophisticated versions of the kind of conversations he's had that go a long way to, toward showing how even the most troubling people can be reached. Davis continued this volunteer work for years, making the point that his success cannot be dismissed as exceptional. And this and numerous other experiences in transforming hateful neo-Nazis and other white supremacists in Europe and the US suggests that this method deserves much broader consideration. Some international relations experts, most notably Professor James G. Blight, charted a course of what they call deploying realistic empathy in international relations. 
His intriguing meetings with leaders in Iran and North Vietnam seem worth consideration, especially because his understandings <clears throat> were unusually non-judgmental. When one gathers all the evidence throughout history and in modern times, it can seem plausible that empathetic explanations made prominent could hasten a new age of enlightenment that has potential for stemming the rising tide of destructiveness we see manifested in the many demagogic movements that now threaten us. Thank you for listening.